Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley at JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be doing this short video for you today. Our topic, get him to hear you, hear you, listen and hear you. All right, really quickly, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if any time during this video, the content resonates with you, please hit that like button so I can be seen in the YouTube algorithms. Lastly, this is my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony. Very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis and ask me questions. And I shoot personalized videos just for you in the group. So check out the link below to my VIP group. All right, let's talk about getting the man to listen and hear you. Do you want that? <laughs> All right, I'll be candid with you. This video was birthed out of watching a video with John Gray. And if you're not familiar with John Gray, he wrote the famous book called Men Are From Mars and Women From Venus. And while I appreciate a lot of the work he's done in that book, helping people improve their relationships, especially in the area of communication, what I didn't like and what frustrates me is the narrative that men operate from the premise that they just simply, they don't listen to you, they only want to fix whatever problem you have, and it's all based on their testosterone levels, and women are different because of their estrogen levels. And as I'm listening to this, I, I swear to God I want to barf because there is more to the equation than just our levels of testosterone for us men. And the reason why I know this is I look at someone like my son. My 20, here's a picture of my 25-year-old son, Colin. There he is, handsome guy. Um, you know, he's an amazing listener. And he's a male. And he's at the height of his testosterone levels at his, at his point in his life. I mean, for men, as you know, at 25, our, our hormones are raging and that they're at the highest level. And yet I look at an individual like my son Colin, he's an amazing listener, an amazing communicator. And this has nothing to do with his testosterone levels as this narrative has you know, shared. And what I want to lean into, one of the, some of the reasons why people are not good listeners, and this is true for men and women alike. And I want you to think about this. When we were born, you know, we had no ability to actually use our words, if you will. <laughs> you know, we were basically talked to our entire, you know, for the first couple of years of our life before we were able to speak. And for the first couple of years, if, if you were blessed to grow up in a good home, and I want you to imagine a lot of people weren't blessed to grow up in a good home, there was probably a lot of loving communication for those first two years. And then everything switched by the time you could walk. And think about it. Your parents would continually tell you what to do, and they would speak down on you and tell you no constantly from a place of love. But to a child, that doesn't feel like love. Now think about that. To a child, that doesn't feel like love. To be constantly told what to do and what you're doing wrong and how you should do it better. Because adults communicate to little children like they're adults. Under the guise of it's a softer voice or something like that. I was sitting out my balcony uh, over the weekend. And I was listening to a father scold his daughter for something she was doing. And I want you to imagine a little child's brain can't comprehend the communication at that point in their life. And so whether it's a boy or a girl, we were indoctrinated in a lot of violent communication as a child. This is one of the reasons why I continually recommend the book. I want everyone to check out this book called Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. By the way, there's a link to all Jonathan recommends books here. Now, the title should have been called Compassionate Communication. And the reason why it was called nonviolent, because we were literally indoctrinated as children with a lot of violent communication. Now, violent, not, not from the sense of like physical violence, but, but of abusive, like from that perspective. So I want you to think about this, and I know many of you are parents and you're thinking, well, I never did that to my children. Of course you did. And quite frankly, to a child, they don't know the difference. So why is this so critically important? Because it's not about testosterone levels. And there's, by the way, folks, when you're listening to the narrative that John shares about testosterone, what are you gonna do about it? You, know, you can't do anything about someone's testosterone or estrogen levels. Of course, men can get increased testosterone, which 
we do from so from the perspective of because we want more energy and we want a hard on and women have estrogen pills so they can feel a little bit more feminine maybe um, I, and again I don't know that you know the hormone uh, necessity uh, from that perspective but I'm here to say that narrative just doesn't make sense because if you look deep now let's take the step deeper were you raised in a good home or you were raised in a poor home? And I, well, not poor from a financial perspective, but from an abusive home. Think about all the dysfunctionality so many children were raised with. And then we are stepping into the generation now where the late baby boomers are the ones that experienced the first level of divorces. And imagine the contention that might have been your home. It might have been in your home if your parents were going through a contentious divorce. And how does that affect us emotionally in our capacity? to be able to listen to another human being. And that's what I'm leaning into today. So first, you understand the narrative of why this happens. Okay, and it's not because testosterone levels are with men make them want to fix things, of course. And by the way, the reason why men want to fix things is because we want, we want harmony, okay? Now, according to John Gray, women are, are addicted to the drama they're addicted to the drama of the crisis happening, so they create crisis for men, and so we can fix that. Well, and based on biology, well, that's basically someone addicted to drama is an unconscious human being in my mind if they're addicted to drama. This is why I wrote my book, and I'm gonna share this with everyone right now. It's called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? It's a journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. So you actually have inner peace inside of you. So you're not addicted to the drama. And by the way, men are equally addicted to drama as women. By the way, as men age, ladies, a lot of you know in midlife how so many men are addicted to the drama as well. So there's nothing to do. I mean, and if it does, okay, so... What's the, so knowing that has to do with testosterone or estrogen, what's, what are you going to do about it? Well, that's what I want to lean into today. Pulled out my trusty notes. Um, so I want to share something with you all because if you want a man to begin to listen to you and hear you, then I invite you to start leaning, leading by example, leading by example. And one of the ways you can do that in communication is when somebody says something to you the first thing you do is repeat back to them what was said Let me repeat that when someone says something to you you repeat back so what you're saying Jonathan is you repeat back what is said yes because that helps someone hear you because they're now using their own words or you're using your own words to validate what they said so now folks this is going to take a little practice because humans aren't used to validating someone's communication. What I mean by validating, let me reframe that, acknowledging someone else's communication. So first, so what you're saying is, Jonathan, this. Okay, if you do that enough time, the other person will start doing it. It happens by osmosis. So first, validate or acknowledge what they say. That's one of the ways to lead by example. Okay. And again, ex the next thing is learn to express things from the perspective of I and not you. I'm here, let me explain this to you. Instead of, it's from an I and not you. A lot of times in relationships, you will point the finger at the guy as he's the cause of the problem instead of something like, hey, Jonathan, I felt really sad when we weren't able to go to the movies. Instead of saying, I'm really pissed at you that we didn't go to the movies. See, one is accusatory and one is sharing your feeling. This is all taught in the book, Nonviolent Communication. So I highly recommend checking this out. And for those who say, reading books take too much time. Folks, if you're not willing to invest a few hours, days or weeks in your life to improve your communication skills, then what's the point of being in relationship? Okay, another thing you might wanna do, and this is something I did with my ex-girlfriend. Um, when we, because there was times when she wanted to vent and there were times she wanted me to solve problems. I repeat that, there was times she wanted to vent and there were times she wanted to solve, me to help her solve a problem. So we had a little code between us and she would say, hey, um, if, it, if she wanted me to help her with a problem, she'd say, hey, Jonathan, can I process something with you? I repeat that, she would say, Jonathan, can I process something with you? 
And what that meant was she wanted my feedback, she wanted my input, she wanted my my counsel, if you will, consigliere, <laughs> for those who know the uh, Godfather reference. Um, by the way, speaking of reference, check out my shirt, Humankind Be Both, yay, and my coffee mug today. Uh, sometimes you forget you're awesome, so this is your reminder. Hey, coming back to, so she'd say, I want to process something. Now, if she wanted to simply vent, she would then say to me, Jonathan, can you hold the basket? Can you hold the basket? And this is um, a reference uh, from my friend, Alison Armstrong, where she says, women oftentimes vomit their feelings. So if there was a situation where my ex-girlfriend wanted to vomit her feelings, she would say, can you hold the basket? And that merely said, meant was I just hold it, let her get it all out, and then we just move on. There would be no discussion over it. It would just sometimes you want to vent. And by the way, venting is very healthy. Venting is very healthy. What's not healthy is complaining, complaining. In my book, chapter two is something called stop, com stop effing complaining. And the point is complaining isn't isn't that venting is just ex getting something out of you complaining is pointing the finger at someone usually and not taking ownership in life oftentimes complaining is used now i can understand why someone might want to vent about the traffic and complain about the traffic but when it complaining usually comes from a judgmental place whereas venting is just simply ex letting go that energy inside of us so our secret or our, our secret to communication when we were together can you can I can I process something with you or can you hold the basket and that was just merely to vent and let's face it we all need someone to vent to at times because the reality is is if we hold stuff in and by the way if you do this enough with your partner he'll begin to do it with you let me repeat that. He'll begin to do it with you. And so what happens is you begin communicating with one another. Now, here's the challenge when you're in relationship with somebody who always wants to be right, someone who is more myopic. Oftentimes, the, the narrative of people being narcissist is really, an, is really someone who's myopic. Myopic means they see the world in tunnel vision, okay? So with these people, it can be very difficult to get them to hear. There's no doubt about it. There are plenty of people that have, they always want to be right. And oftentimes being in relationship with those people is very tenuous. So if you've practiced these skills for a while, or excuse me, you've utilized these tools for a while in your relationship and you're still seeing the behavior of I want to be right, well, then chances are this is not maybe the ideal relationship to be in. And folks, we have to let go of the narrative that every relationship is the forever after, that is supposed to go the distance. Many relationships are here to teach us a lesson. And if you're not familiar with the book, If the Buddha Dated, If the Buddha Dated, I highly recommend checking this out because it's dating from a spiritual perspective. And what I mean by spiritual perspective of not about the destination, about the experience itself because every encounter you have with a human being is an opportunity to grow within yourself and that's my invitation for you is to begin to do the work inside so you're better prepared to be in a really healthy happy relationship this is one of the reasons why i continually recommend the book folks i highly recommend the book eight dates by doctors john and julie gottman Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. And the reason why, and you want to listen to this right now, so don't log off if you're listening. Folks, ever since I began introducing this book to my YouTube community, I'm getting hundreds of emails from women saying, Jonathan, I bought two copies of the book. I gave a copy to the man I'm dating, and we started reading it together. Now, I will tell you, Eight out of 10 times, guys will reject this. They will not want to do this with you for whatever reason. And if someone doesn't want to do that with you, how serious are they about being in a relationship with you? Or how serious are they about being in any relationship with anyone? The ones who have, and I'm telling you, hundreds of women have now emailed me, are telling me that the communication by doing the steps in the, the book lays out, questions and things to ask one another 
that helps prepare, that actually helps create better communication with one another. And that's my invitation for you. In fact, one of the things I do in my private coaching, by the way, check out the link to a free discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. One of the things I do is I work specifically with women to help them ask the right questions in the early stages of dating to determine if a man is emotionally mature and if he's a good candidate for the from a perspective of compatibility. So you definitely, if you want to be in a great, if you want to, if you're single and looking for love and you want help, then you definitely want to check out my private coaching. All right, coming back to communication, why this is so important. Folks, the reason why people can't hear you is because humans aren't talking to one another. And this is because of their imprinting, maybe their cultural background, maybe the fact that boys are treated differently than girls. There is a big stew that causes this that has nothing to do with testosterone and estrogen, okay? Yes, those are part of the equation, but they're small, they're just parts, okay? You have to add this all together. And ultimately, if you want to improve communication in your relationship, it's gonna require being intentional. And I know many of you love the idea that men are the leaders of the relationship and you just sit back and you're feminine, they're gonna claim you. Ladies, that's great for when we men are chasing sex, okay? Let them do that all day long. If you're the type of woman that wants to be in a serious, fully committed relationship, then start being intentional. Set your standards right from the get-go so you don't waste time with the wrong guys and you start, you start experiencing a relationship with the right guys. All right, I've given you a lot here to digest. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Post a comment, post a question. I do my best to read them all. I do my best to acknowledge many of them. If you like my shirt, my coffee mug, let me know. If my content resonates with you, please share it and like it with friends. And again, check out all the links below. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big check and a Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.